Can you still make money by building mobile games and how do you actually go from idea to application on the App Store? I've recently created a game called Crossing Numbers that brings in some money and you can find it on both iOS and Android. And I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I took from the very beginning of an idea to building the actual application to finally releasing it and I'm gonna not leave out anything. So if you wanna learn how to build your own game and make money, you should follow along the video and definitely hit the subscribe button so you get notified about upcoming videos on how to build great applications. And of course, as always, let's first roll the Simonics intro. The first step is of course to find an idea. In my case, this was actually pretty easy because I've done a similar application like 10 years ago probably. I just wanted to do a more up-to-date version. But still, I looked on the App Store for some inspiration because if you have a certain category in mind, you can just find the other games and look at what they're doing, how they're monetizing their game, which features they offer, how the game just in general works. And this will give you a pretty good idea of what you want to do in your application. Once you got an idea for a game, you usually go ahead and sketch out how the game should look like. You can do this in Figma, you can do this in Sketch, pretty much in every design tool. But I actually skipped that step because, well, I'm not really a designer, I'm not good with those tools and I already had a quite exact vision of how the finished product should look like. But normally I would definitely recommend you get those designs. You could also hire someone to do this for you if you're not a designer. This will give you a blueprint of your application that you can later then work on or actually give to someone else to create it. Once you got the idea and the design, it's time to develop the application. In my case, I'm a developer so I used Ionic. Ionic is a cross-platform solution which allows me to build a game from one code base for both iOS, Android and even the web. Now, before picking Ionic, I also tried different other things like Phaser, which was made for developing games with JavaScript, but I actually found this to be too much in my case, since crossing numbers should be a simple numbers game, and I was quite confident that I could do this with some basic JavaScript knowledge and Ionic UI. Watch out if you hire a developer for the job, because they might only know iOS development or Android development, and you're gonna have to pay twice for two applications, because usually you wanna be on iOS and Android at the same time. Be careful, cross platform solutions are actually very worthy contenders to native applications unless you want to do something with really heavy 3D uh, images and calculations going on. But for a lot of games, a cross-platform solution these days won't be different from using iOS native and Android native in the end. If you develop the game yourself, I highly recommend in the beginning just to set up the whole navigation for the project. I really like to navigate around in my application even if there's nothing on the screen. I just know these are the different pages that I can go to and it also makes it easier to give certain pages or functionality to different people on your team or to an external developer. Something that I found quite critical to the implementation of a game were assets. Now, if you check out any mobile game these days you're gonna see that it doesn't look like your to-do application or note application because a game should look like a game it should sound like a game there are actually a lot of places where you can get free game assets and that's where I went as well so I got a lot of free uh, UI assets elements and even sounds you can also get subscriptions for different platforms which are not too expensive so if you're serious about your idea probably you want to spend some money on the game assets because the visuals of a game are very very important the second most most important thing besides having a good game and having a good idea is also having animations in your game. Even if you're just using cool assets and have a cool idea but nothing actually moves or animates, that's gonna be a boring game. So usually you want to make sure that you put in some kind of animations, which we did in the beginning. We didn't put a lot of focus uh, on animations of our application because we want to get out a quick MVP to see how people receive this application. But overall, I would definitely spend a lot of time on the UI and the animations of your game to make it really, really cool. If you're a developer and create this application yourself, I highly recommend you use something like Git to host your repository. I still remember when we did the first version of this application like 10 years ago, I didn't know a lot about programming. We actually shared all the files of an Xcode project with Dropbox. Yes, I didn't know about repositories back then. With the knowledge of today, I highly recommend you just sign up for GitHub. You can even have a free repository and it makes managing your work so much easier. Even if you're working alone on it, you can go back in time and 
see why you broke something but if you work with someone else this is just uh, completely no-brainer you need this if you also want to track tasks and to-dos you could either use that github repository or use an external tool you can just use Google Drive uh, something to share a document with your friend or developer if it's getting bigger you might need a different solution but if it's like more of a hobby then this should be sufficient now you've come a long way you found your idea you got the game assets you started building the game and you have a good UI and at that point you want to think about how to monetize the game because you actually want to make money from that game right it's not just a fun project at, at least I think so there are basically three options how you could monetize your game number one you could sell the game which means people need to pay like two five dollars on the App Store before they can download the game option number two is you could have ads in your game so people probably see a video or they have a banner and you earn a few cents because people see that and maybe they're gonna click on it or the third option is to have in-app purchases so probably something like you buy 500 gems or you want to remove the ads so you could probably combine the ads and the in-app purchase approach I'm actually not a big fan of the first approach because this puts your whole application behind a paywall the download numbers for your application if nobody knows about it won't be that high if you also say okay please give me five dollars upfront for this game which might or might not be great you're gonna see stats like one download two downloads probably per day unless you have really good marketing and a unique selling position but I kind of feel like a lot of applications these days are free and they do a lot better by combining either ads or having some uh, serious in-app purchase options in our case we first of all went with ad approach we have some ads that cover the whole screen you know this from other apps basically if you want another live if the game is over if you want to power up you can watch like 20 30 seconds of a video and then you get some kind of power up and that's actually what we did as well if you consider using ads or in-app purchases check the links below I got tutorials about how to set this up with capacitor in JavaScript applications it's really that easy however if you go down the ad mob route which is having ads from Google in your application there is actually a little like chicken and egg problem because to get your application verified by AdMob, the application needs to be on the App Store, but I only want to have it on the App Store if I have ads. So that was like a little gap between these things. I don't know how to figure this out in the best possible way. I just assume that you should do like a first release of your application, then get it verified by AdMob and then integrate ads. Probably that's the way to go. However, during development or when you want to involve your dad, you might want to do some kind of beta testing as well. Both iOS and Android are pretty good with that. There's a beta testing track available on the Google Play Store and within App Store Connect there's also the test flight program which easily lets you roll out your application to some beta testers to collect some initial feedback and so you can go back to the beginning and fix all those bugs. All right, now that you have a monetization strategy and your application looks good, you need to take care of the App Store presence. This is most likely the most dreading task because you're done, you wanna get your app out and now there's this huge form and you're just like, wow, why do I have to go through this once again? At least this is how it felt to me, but I could use my own tool called App Store Kit, which helped me to generate a few uh, screenshots. You can also give it a try. I actually think about making it free in the future. So if you wanna see it free, leave a like below the video and I'm gonna make it happen sooner than later. But you should actually take some time to craft that App Store presence, because in the end, this is what people see first. This is how they find you. So you're gonna wanna think about keywords, you wanna think about SEO or actually it's called ASO App Store Optimization. There are whole tools about analyzing different App Store presences and how you can get the most out of your page. So please don't rush this step. It is really important to show the features of your application, have good screenshots, and maybe even record a little video that shows your game. This can go a long way and will get you a lot more downloads. Now, once you got all of this in place, you can start the magic lottery called the app review process. In fact, this was pretty horrible with iOS in the past and it took a week and with Google it went a lot faster. However, in my recent experience, it was the complete opposite. With Apple, I submitted the application. It was reviewed like two hours later and immediately accepted. With Google, it took about two or three days and I think the first two or three versions were rejected and also some future updates. This means be prepared for problems, be prepared for pain and be prepared for random issues that the review process brings up about your application that might not even be true. Just factor this in. 
it might take some time until your final application is really live. So if you're on a tight deadline or you promised your users you're gonna go live in one, two months, make sure you put that buffer into the end of your estimation. All right, the application is finally live, the big day, and at that point, you wanna get as many users to download your application as possible. If possible, you're gonna actually rank higher in the App Store ranking and probably more users gonna find you and you're gonna get even more downloads. Get all your friends to download the application, leave a nice rating, um, do all they can to promote your application, especially in the beginning when you go live. If your application is really amazing and you get a lot of traction, you're gonna get really high in the like top 100 charts and if you can do this i promise you you're gonna make a lot of money from your application however if your application has some issues also known as bugs you want to make sure that you track them accordingly so monitor all the feedback you get below your application but also the feedback from your beta testers or whoever all tried your application and track that accordingly and try to work on that feedback as soon as possible so you can roll out updates to your applications so in our case after the first release we pushed like two three quick update releases after in the first week uh, so we could fix some critical bugs and now it's at a pretty stable version and we consider like the next major version to have more features and we plan that out in a bit more relaxed way so these were pretty much all the steps that we took because we develop our application using ionic and angular we can now also easily build a web implementation or a progressive web app from this which means another platform where we could attract users to our application and eventually make money. And if you also want to learn how to do this, you can check out the Ionic Academy, which is my online school to help developers build awesome applications using Ionic. And the final question is, how much money did Simon actually make with crossing numbers until now? Well, I didn't lie, I definitely made money. It's just not that much to cover all my life expenses at this point. But I'd say it definitely could pay for a small meal. I'm pretty sure the 50 hours I spent on this application are worth spent. But if you take it more serious and go through all the steps that we've covered in this video, I'm sure you're gonna make more money than I did and probably I'm gonna make more in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please hit the like button and stay subscribed for more videos and I will catch you next time. And until then, happy coding, Simon. <laughs>